Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Jamie and I am so excited for today's video. Today I am going to be sharing with you so many romance books that I think are so worth your time. If you are new to the romance genre and you don't really know where to start, if you are, you know, kind of seasoned as a romance reader but you're looking for some books that maybe you haven't heard of, I really hope this video is for you. I hope you find some amazing books. I have definitely done like romance recommendation videos on my channel before but usually they're quite small. It's like, here are like 10 or 5 of my favourite romance books that I want to share. This one I have 25 books to share with you. I've gone through every single romance book that I have ever read in my life and I have picked out the best of the best. I haven't organized them by any tropes or anything. We're just going to go through them. I will say though I haven't put any specific like series in this video. I have avoided series like romance book series from this video completely because let me know if you like this one and you want me to do a separate video on romance book series. If there is a book in here that is part of a series the only reason that it's here will be because it's the only book I have read from that series or I haven't loved the other books in the series but like I just wanted to highlight that one book. So yeah I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want one specifically on like the series that I really really love but yeah we're just gonna get straight into it. I'm gonna try and go pretty quickly because there's a lot of books to talk about but strap in and I hope you enjoy. Let's start with the romance book that I've actually read the most recently which is The Mixtape by Brittany Cherry. I read this on Kindle Unlimited, literally finished it a couple of days ago and was like I need to share this with the world. I love this book so much. This one is basically like rock star, like one of us is famous kind of trope. Our main female main character is a single mother and our male main character is one half of a music duo that he has with his twin brother. However at the very beginning of the novel his twin brother is in a really tragic accident. So he's really battling with his grief but also like coming back to the music scene like a lot of time on. Our two main characters have a chance encounter and they end up helping each other in ways that they didn't even realize. I love this book so much like the romance is so good but also like the storylines for our individual characters beyond their relationship is so beautiful. Oliver's exploration with grief and really like trying to move on from losing his brother in a way that is like respectful that still like commemorates his memory and then also Emery her journey with her daughter being a single mom being like financially not the most comfortable. Their journeys individually was just so 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 beautiful. I thought the dialogue in this book was really good. I thought the progression and the pacing was amazing. Like the amount of yearning that we see and seeing like our two main characters become like co-workers and then friends and then move on into that like relationship was absolutely gorgeous. I love these characters so much and this romance book is definitely one that is worth your time. Next I'm going to talk about an author that is very popular. So there is definitely going to be a mix of like not so popular books on here and then ones that are pretty hyped but they're like hyped for a reason. And I'm going to talk about Emily Henry who I have two books of hers on my list here. So first of all we have you and Me on Vacation. So this was the first book that I read by Emily Henry that I really enjoyed. I read Beach Read. I didn't really like that book. So if you like are kind of on the side of the unpopular opinion, which is not really loving Beach Read, then maybe you'll like this one. I found this one really, really gorgeous. Also known as People We Meet on Vacation in like the US for some reason, different titles. I absolutely love this book. This is Friends to Lovers. We follow our two main characters, Alex and Poppy, and they have been like best friends since college and every couple of years, they go on a holiday together because Poppy is like a travel journalist. Throughout this book we follow the two separate timelines like when Poppy and Alex meet and they start to go on these holidays and then also the present timeline which is where they're not friends anymore. But Poppy decides to reach out to him and be like why have we stopped being friends? Let's go on like one last holiday. Let's try to repair this friendship and they try and do so. I kind of loved the semi-mystery element of it and the fact that like we don't know what happened that led to these two to stop being friends. So I really enjoyed like wanting to know that reason and that reason kind of cropping up like as the story progresses. I love like a bit of like a mystery plot in a romance as well as like the actual relationship. So I really enjoyed that. I also just feel like this book was really beautiful. I like don't really care that much for friends to lovers but this one like seeing their friendship blossom like I genuinely believed that like they were really good friends and they did have a really strong connection and chemistry just even as like individual like people and as the friendship as well like not just in like a sexual way or a romantic way. I just feel like Emily Henry has such a good way of crafting a story and this one is definitely more of her like fun reads. Some of her books can be quite like 
melancholic or quite serious but this one felt like way more fun and I feel like she did a really good job at that. I really like the characters. I liked the difference between Poppy who was very high energy and very positive and then Alex who was a bit more stoic and not grumpy but like just a bit quieter a bit more introverted and I really loved their dynamic so this book is definitely like a really good romance book. And so is Book Lovers which is the other Emily Henry book that I want to share. I really really loved this book as well. This is like small town like academic rivals although they're not studying they're just like in the workplace so I'd say like workplace rivals. Nora and Charlie both work in the publishing industry and they've always kind of been pitted against each other. Like Nora definitely has a bit of grief with Charlie. Nora ends up going to the small town with her sister who she's trying to like repair a relationship with and she doesn't even realize but Charlie that is like his childhood small town and he's there and they end up forming this friendship which turns into a relationship as well. I really loved the small town vibes and once again this is another book where like our characters do have individual like things going on in their lives outside of the relationship. And I thought this was really really well done. I really liked the sister dynamic and like Nora's situation with that. I also love that Nora is like a very cutthroat businesswoman so it was really giving like The Man by Taylor Swift which isn't one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs but I liked that energy of Nora being like yeah I'm a bitch but like it's just because I work hard. I just really liked Nora and I really liked Charlie and it was just also a really good romance book like once again Emily Henry has a way with like crafting and structuring a story and making it enjoyable the whole way through so definitely recommend this one too. The next one I want to share is Funny You Should Ask by Elisa Sussman. This one is kind of like I feel like I had kind of mixed reviews, like a few mixed opinions on this one, but I didn't really see where the negativity came from. I really enjoyed this. This is another one of us's famous trope, which is just genuinely like one of my favorite tropes ever. Like, don't ask me why. I think it's just like the fantasy of like, and the escapism and the unrealistic nature of books like this. But basically in this we follow our two main characters, Chani and Gabe. Chani is a journalist and one day she gets this assignment to interview Gabe, who is like a really famous movie star. They end up going on this like amazing weekend together like doing this article like think like when Rolling Stone like spends like quite a few days with like someone that they're interviewing to write this like incredible piece. It's kind of like that but then they like never see each other again they never speak but the interview becomes very very like famous. It's people are like what went on between those two during that weekend and years years later they get an opportunity to do it again for like the anniversary of the article and I really liked that timeline like trying to figure out what happened during that weekend along with like the public like we as the readers don't know as well because it is dual timeline and I really really enjoyed that. I thought it was really charming, I thought it was funny, I really really enjoyed the characters and their dynamic and again it was another one where it's like what happened? Like I like following that kind of mystery. I feel like a lot of people's criticism for this was like it was too insta love but like I feel like it's just not. Like I don't think there's anything wrong with insta love if it's warranted and if the pacing of the book is good and the pacing of this book was very very good. Like I can see why they you know kind of had this attraction to each other so quickly. They were just like good people. And I liked that. I found also all the side characters to be really entertaining. I found the writing and like the humor to be very very like stand up like it was really good. So definitely another book that I really recommend. Next I want to share another book that I read on my Kindle so I don't have a physical copy but that is I Temporarily Do. This is a really really short romance but really cute and I feel like I want more people to like read it. It's just one of those really good ones that like you can read in one sitting and it's really enjoyable. It's definitely not like perfect. I still really enjoyed it. I found it like really endearing. This is a marriage of convenience romance. We follow our two main characters who end up getting married to stay in this like apartment on campus for like married couples because they're both doing like a similar degree and both our characters have been like screwed over for their like living situation, their on campus living situation so they're like well we might as well just do this. I really love like how platonic the characters are at the beginning and seeing their progression from friends to something a bit more is really sweet because it isn't like one of those things where it's like oh we've been in love with each other the entire time. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, it's been like a crush, like a friend crush. Like I find you attractive, but you've always been off limits because you've always been my friend for so many years. And seeing that kind of like realistic nature of the friends to lovers was really cute and like just quite original, I think. Maybe I haven't read enough friends to lovers, but I just found it to be like really realistic for us kind of friends to lovers relationship. I found 
found both our characters to be really really sweet like and just again like good people like a bit shy a bit reserved but like just true friends. It was just such a like short concise book. I think the progression was really good. Like it was a really realistic sense of like them finding their attraction for each other. I love the side characters. I love a marriage of convenience dynamic. So this is like a really good like short little romance to read in one sitting. I found it really fun. A romance that I read a really long time ago but I still wanted to share because I just don't talk about it enough on my channel I don't think is Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is such a fun book and like everyone knows that it's a fun book but like I haven't spoken about it on my channel in so long so I wanted to share it with you guys again because it is a really good time. It is worth the hype. Basically this is one of the most like fun concepts I've read. It's Enemies to Lovers and we follow the first like son of the president of the United States and the Prince of Wales and they are enemies they do not like each other when they go to these like political events in their like separate countries they always are like we don't get along we hate each other and then they realize actually maybe we are kind of a vibe <laughs> again I think it's just one of those books where I really love like people navigating a relationship when they are in the spotlight they have like the paparazzi around them but I feel like this one kind of goes the extra mile because it is political. So both our characters are obviously gay and it's navigating that idea of being like, well, not only are we going to come out to a relationship for the public between our two separate countries and our political families, but also we are queer. Like that is also another thing. It just gives another layer to the novel and a layer to the relationship, which I found really interesting and really impactful. But not only is it kind of like a serious situation, this book is so fun. Like it has such a beautiful sense of humor. I will say about this book, it may become dated in a few years. It was published in like 2019. There are so many pop culture references, but I kind of like the pop culture references in here because even though there was a lot, they were really funny. They were quite like tailored to me in a sense. And I just really enjoyed that. I th found that really fun and I feel like it's kind of cute because it will kind of become like a product of its time and fun to revisit in like 10 years from now and be like, oh yeah, like that piece of media was referenced in here. I genuinely did find the sense of humor really good. I found like all of the side characters to be great. The ending of this book is feels so triumphant and definitely like worthy of the rest of the story. Like it's so gorgeous and yeah, I really enjoy this one. It's definitely worth the hype. However, I will say do not watch the film adaptation. It's one of the worst film adaptations I've ever seen in my life. But the book itself, really good. Next I'm going to share another book that I read quite a while ago but still I think holds up. It's The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I really really like this one. I feel like this is the first Enemies to Lovers book that I really read and I had such a great time. I think it was the first Christina Lauren I read as well and ever since then like I keep going back to Christina Lauren purely because of this book. I've had so a lot of misses by Christina Lauren. Like I've read a lot of books by them that I do not enjoy but I keep going back because of this one book. Basically we follow our main character Olive and our other main character Ethan. Olive and Ethan have to go on this like honeymoon trip together because they're the only ones at their like siblings wedding that didn't get food poisoning and the bride and groom are like don't waste the trip go on the trip you just have to pretend to be like on your honeymoon like you have to pretend to be newlyweds the banter in this book is so fun it's such like a fun unique concept like our two characters having to go on this fucking honeymoon and pretending to be like a married couple and of course as you would expect things just go wrong all the time like they're like okay we'll go we'll have separate trips whatever they go they see people they know there like it's so fun it is just so fun i feel like the chemistry between the two characters was so strong so believable it just jumped off the page and this one again like was popular and is still popular for a reason i think maybe it does have the like not nostalgia because i literally read it four years ago but like because it's one of the first romances i read the first enemy to lovers first christina lauren it does have a like special place in my heart so maybe i am like hyping it up a little bit in my head but it's still just like so good and i genuinely feel like if i was to read it again like now like today I would still feel the same way about it. Speaking of like trips away like holiday destinations I also really want to share Do I Know You by Austin Seaman Broker and Emily Wibberley which is a writer like couple duo. This is a second chance romance kind of like marriage and turmoil vibes. We follow our two main characters Eliza and Graham. They are kind of struggling in their marriage and they decide to go on a holiday to like reignite it. It's still not really working until someone on the trip mistakes them for strangers so they kind of play into that 
and try and like flirt with each other and like see if they can spark up like why they fell in love with each other in the first place. It's dual perspective which I really enjoyed because it means that I'm getting like two sides of the story like there's not one side of the story that is like a biased account and seeing why the marriage isn't working was actually just like really refreshing because it just felt really honest and it felt really real. And I just really enjoyed that. I don't like most marriage in turmoil or relationship in turmoil romances because I feel like the, the characters are really petty and I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't be together. Like, you guys don't like each other. But in this one, the love was never not there. The love was always there. Our characters always respected each other and wanted to make things work. But it was beautiful to see them fall in love even deeper for like the second time. I just found the characters to be really mature. The way they dealt with things and the way they were feeling was like so valid, but they didn't like act in a way that I thought to be like not fun to read about. It was definitely just like quite a sweet understated story, nothing like super dramatic, but still really beautiful. And I really liked the writing style and I liked our individual characters. Next, I'm gonna share another fairly recent read, which is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. This was like everyone's favorite book of 2023. And I can absolutely see why. Like I read this pretty recently, like last month, and I absolutely loved it. This is more like magical realism kind of romance. We follow our main character, Clementine, who lives in a magic apartment. And the apartment is magic because Every once in a while, being in their apartment, it will time travel back to seven years. And one day, Clementine goes in and it has time travel back seven years and there is a random man standing there and they have this beautiful instant connection and start to fall in love. But there's also like a dilemma because Clementine's like, where is he now, seven years later? Where is he? Like, what if he's not the same? I don't know. Like, but we're in such a tricky situation. It's just really unique and really beautiful. Clementine has also uh, recently lost her, like, aunt, who's one of her best friends. So it's once again, like, another book that really explores grief. But I found this to be just so gorgeous, so romantic. The way it was written was just beautiful. Like, so many gorgeous quotes in here. And I just really, really bought that instant connection. I'm such a tortured romantic. Like, I'm like, yeah, I want to, like, be in love, but I want it to be a challenge. And this was definitely a challenge for our two main characters and I ate up every single part of it. I thought it was so fun, so endearing. I loved it and such a unique and original story. I feel like, yeah, maybe time travel, time loop romances are like done quite often. They have been done before, but I just found this one to be unique in the idea and the storytelling of it all. So I really love this and definitely, definitely worth the hype. You guys definitely saw this next one coming because I talk about it all the fucking time. Like any opportunity to talk about it, I will talk about it. I have the perfect opportunity now. So I'm going to fucking share with you. Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, my literal favorite romance book of all time. I am absolutely obsessed with this romance and I could not make this video and not include it. I'm so sorry. I literally sound like a broken record, but I just fucking love this book so much. This is a second chance romance. We follow our main characters, Eva and Shane. Eva and Shane, when they were teenagers, had this really gorgeous, like, whirlwind romance, but it was very right person, wrong time. They were both going through so much individually, so even though they spent this week together and had this instant connection, they were then separated for the next 15 years. Eva and Shane in their adulthood both end up as writers and they have this chance encounter in New York and they're both like, oh my God, it's you. They end up spending another beautiful seven days together and fall in love with each other all over again. However, it's not an easy ride for them. And I think that's why I loved this book so much. Like, I don't know, I love a challenging romance and I feel like these two characters, it wasn't simple and easy. And I really loved that aspect of the book that they were so willing to like work for it, to make each other like fall in love with each other again. I just found it so romantic. These two characters are absolute soulmates. And also they're both just such amazing individual people on their own. Shane, what a man, like he is so responsible. He's so selfless. Eva also is a single mother, which I always respect. I always respect our single parent characters in romance novels. Eva also does have a chronic illness. She gets chronic migraines. And I feel like the way that the chronic illness was depicted in this book was just so impactful. If you don't have a chronic illness, like reading that, you'd be like, wow, okay. Like I really understand like the pain and the torture that people go through when they do have a chronic illness. She actually does share a chronic illness with a friend of mine and I have been friends with that person for such a long time. I know a lot about their chronic illness and what they have to deal with. So I was like, yes, it was very accurate about like what chronically ill people do have to deal with. I just found it so beautiful. There was also, while it was like very deep and emotional, I cried several times. 
it was also funny. I feel like it's such a skill for an author to do like a tragic like love story and have like you know little nuggets of humor in there. I absolutely loved it. I laughed out loud several times and I cried audibly several times. So that's how you know it's just like the perfect book. It is the perfect book. It is the perfect romance book for me and if you haven't read it yet like go read it now. Like I don't know how you watch my channel and you haven't read this <laughs> but given how much I speak about it. Okay let's change gears for a second. Let's go with two romances by the same author that are kind of unhinged but once again i can't make this video and not talk about my ultimate guilty pleasure romance novels i feel like if you know me you know what's coming next yeah i'm not embarrassed or ashamed punk 57 by penelope douglas perfect it's a perfect book in my eyes I love this book so much. I have reread it a few times and yes, it's very very smutty But like would you believe me if I told you I wasn't reading it for the smart and I was reading it for the drama I am someone who loves drama not in my own life, but like I literally love reality television I love drama this is so full of drama, so full of twists and turns, and I freaking love it. We follow our two main characters, Misha and Ryan, who were pen pals growing up. Misha ends up seeing something. He sees Ryan in real life. They've agreed to never meet, but he sees Ryan in real life, recognizes her, and is like, I don't like her. She is very different to her letters. I do not like her. Ryan, however, she is dealing all of a sudden with Misha's like ghosting of her. She's like, where is my pen pal gone? He's the one person that like keeps me sane. He's the one person I can be myself around. Where is he? Then all of a sudden this new guy starts at her school and for some reason he hates her and she's like, who is this hottie but also where is Misha but who's this hottie who hates me? And then he ends up bullying her. So yeah, it like is a bully romance. But she likes it and she's like, I need to talk to Misha about this but also like I'm really attracted to this guy. One guess, right? One guess about who this guy is. It's not a spoiler. It's literally like within the first fucking like pages of this novel. It's so drama fueled like honestly if i was at the school with these characters i would be gossiping the entire time because they just give us so much tea and i love it i genuinely feel like these two characters i fucking love like morally gray anti-hero characters and these two characters are like pretty awful to each other and like but i get it like they're not so awful that it's like beyond like forgiveness i get it i i really understand ryan i feel like she is such a girl boss she's doing what she needs to do to survive in the, this fucked up school fucked up society she's trying to like get in with the status quo she has armor on she's got her emotional walls up like i understand her i just love this there are like fucking plot twists in this book as well that you wouldn't expect like it's gorgeous i feel like it's so fun my ultimate guilty pleasure for sure. It's addicting. Like, everyone that I have shared this book with, they're like, okay, it's not what I usually read, Jamie, but I fucking get it. And they all read it in one sitting. I have read it in one sitting, like, multiple times. It's just so fun. If you don't mind a little bit of dark romance, a little bit of, like, morally grey, read it. Also, I said that there were going to be two Penelope Douglas books in here. I have to share Birthday Girl as well. Birthday Girl, for me, wasn't as exciting as Punk 57, but, like, sometimes we love a Delph. And this is exactly what this book is. Oh my god. We follow our main character Jordan. She has this boyfriend who she's like, ugh, hate him. Moves in with her boyfriend. Starts to realize that her boyfriend's dad has a little something going on about him. This book is definitely like pretty slow burn. There's a lot of yearning and pining. I just found the dad to be such a fun character. His name's Pike. He was just so like obsessed with her but he wasn't like a creep. I just found their romance to be really fun and exciting and once again I love drama and I love gossip and like if I was in these characters lives I would be gossiping 24-7. Penelope Douglas just writes really good books where you can just like gossip and have drama and I really enjoyed it. I think it's a fun book. It's not like the most serious and it was enjoyable. So yeah, if you like a Delph, but they go. Next, I'm going to talk about a book that I also don't own, but it is The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye. I love this book. This is a really, really good book. I haven't read it in a while, but I'm really itching for a reread. This is uh, kind of enemies to lovers, I suppose miscommunication to lovers but we basically follow two rival i guess co-workers or not even co-workers but just two rival people that work for like rival dating apps so our main female main character she's the ceo of her dating app and then the male main character he is like the he's a famous sports player and he is the face 
of this rival dating app. Like he's trying to like market it. They end up doing like a fake dating situation. But the thing is they actually had a one night stand like years previous and our main female main character our ceo girl boss has not forgotten that he ghosted her so she's like kind of a hater but she's also like fake dating could actually be really good for the business so they end up in this fake dating situation but obviously they've got chemistry obviously they've got like a history of being like we are attracted to each other so it doesn't go as smoothly. I really love this book because it was my first experience with like a CEO, girl boss, sex positive, sexually liberated woman, and then like a really shy, soft spoken guy. So kind of like reverse grumpy sunshine. Although I wouldn't say she's grumpy. I'd just say she has, she's got ambition and she has her priorities in order. I just found their romance to be really sweet. I really particularly love the male main character. Oh, I love both the characters. I just feel like their dynamic was really, really good. And it was just really enjoyable from the get go. I loved this book and I really recommend it. Speaking of CEO girl bosses, I also have to share another recent romance book I read, which is Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I love this. This was also a lot of people's like favorite book of 2023, and rightfully so. It was so fun. This is another age gap romance, but our it's the age gap is between like our our female main character is uh, like 10 years older than the male main character. She is a doctor with really really intense parents that are like you need to continue our legacy, you need to get back together with your abusive ex-husband. They have really high expectations of her but she has this like chance encounter with this younger man in this small town who runs a bed and breakfast. They have a really romantic one night stand and then they try and navigate like dating while all these other dramas are going on in their lives. It's very much like boy falls first like the guy is absolutely obsessed with her which I love to see. Their chemistry is absolutely undeniable. Like they have such strong chemistry and I just love this book once again because of like the dramas and like the issues that our main characters were going through outside of the romance. It made me really root for the characters and really root for them to be together because they had so many obstacles and hopes to jump through to get to that stage. So it really felt like you were on their side, like you wanted them to be together so badly. I just love the two main characters. Every single romance that I enjoy is usually because I love the characters so much. They both had so much going on with them. They both had so much about them. And it was just such a readable, like addicting book. Like I, the side characters and all the interesting stuff with them was funny. I just like really found it humorous as well like I did laugh out loud at one stage and it was just gorgeous I was rooting for them the whole time I wanted them to be together OTP so really recommend this one as well we're going to completely switch gears and I really want to share the Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton which is a historical fantasy kind of romance I'd say it's like lo-fi fantasy it's not like dragons and elves and fae and stuff like that it's like set in Victorian England and it's kind of like witches and spies and pirates their houses fly for example like it's never explained. The houses just fly and we have to like be okay with that. This is one of the funniest books I've ever read. It really reminded me of like Oscar Wilde's like comedy of manners. So I was laughing out loud the entire time. Like this book is so endearing and I love it. It is like enemies to lovers. We follow our main character Cecilia who is trying to get into the Wisteria Society. She's like a petty thief. Like she's a petty criminal. She wants to get into the society of like bad evil women but she's a lot younger and she's struggling but she's also being hunted by assassin for hire Ned and he's like I have to kill her but there's something about her that is so charming. It was just so fun. Like this assassin falling in love with his target is just such a cute idea. I really loved the characters. I found once again, this book so endearing. It's just like nothing I've ever read. And I just really loved it. It was so silly and goofy, but like such a good time. So well written and just really, really good. If you like like really atmospheric books, if you like historical fiction, if you like books that are really funny, this book is really funny, then I feel like you'll really enjoy this. I cannot believe it's taken me this long to talk about a sapphic romance, but I really want to share Written in the Stars by Alexandria Balfour. This is such a good enemies to lovers romance, which is kind of a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. What I love about this is one of our main characters is like an astrologist. That is her job. She makes a living writing like astrology memes for an Instagram account. What a girl boss dream job, literal dream job. But she gets set up on a blind date with a woman called Darcy and they immediately just don't mesh. Our main character is really clumsy and Darcy's like, I don't know about her, but they end up going on a fake dating situation because Darcy, the one who like walks out on this woman, accidentally shares with her family like, oh yeah, I've met someone. I went on a date with her. Yeah, this is her. 
And then Darcy reaches out to her and is like, please fake date me. And she's like, what the fuck? So it's like, enemies to love is fake dating. And it is so fun. I really liked the two main characters. I feel like, once again, so fleshed out, so well defined. Really, really like opposites attract kind of romance. And I found it so charming. And them trying to work out their differences, but falling in love at the same time. I can't remember who it was, but one of our characters has a really tough relationship with their parents. So the other character, like seeing that one be really vulnerable for the first time was like a really beautiful experience. I just found this to be so fun, so charming. So really recommend this sapphic romance. Next we have Love Theoretically by Ellie Hazelwood. I feel like everyone has heard of this book. Everyone loves it and rightfully so. This is another really popular one, but like, there is a reason for it to be popular. It's so good. It's another Enemies to Lovers and the Enemies to Lovers was truly Enemies to Lovering in this novel. Like it was one of the best Enemies to Lovers I've ever read. It's another one of Ellie Hazelwood's classic women in STEM novels. Our main character Elsie is vying for a job but the person that is in charge of like choosing who is right for the role is an enemy of hers. Elsie works like part-time while she's doing her like studying, doing all her science. She works part-time as a girlfriend for hire and the guy who like doesn't like her is the brother of one of Elsie's clients so he just like thinks that there is something fishy about her he doesn't know their situation but he's like I don't trust her so basically it's them like in this workplace cannot deny their attraction really really loved it really loved the characters in here really loved the witty banter I genuinely found all the theoretical physics stuff really interesting and I'm not a science girly so Ellie Hazelwood like thank you for being so skilled and like interweaving all the science and being able to get my brain invested loved all the characters loved this book loved the progression of the romance it's genuinely so good next I have another dark romance which is Promises and Pomegranates by Sav R Miller which is the like one and only mafia romance I've ever read but really really enjoyed it it is a inspired by Hades and Persephone I'm such a like classics geek so really loved that aspect and like seeing how it was like related to that myth. Cal, our main character, does kind of kidnap the um, the female heroine and like force her into her marriage. But like I really enjoyed that. I thought it was really fun and full of drama. But it also meant that because it's like a dark romance and we see these dark sides of these characters, when the characters show a moment of like gentleness it's really impactful and I feel like Sev R. Miller does it so well in this book. Like it's such a really good like light and shade really good blend of those moments. I was just engrossed from page one. It was so addicting. I never thought that I would be into a dark romance, let alone like mafia, but really, really enjoyed it and just thought it was so fun. Next we have a sports romance, which is Blindside by Candy Steiner. I loved this book. This is definitely a lot sweeter than the previous book I just talked about, but so fun. Really smutty. Was not expecting this to be so smutty, but like a really like enjoyable time. I'm not like the biggest like smut person. Like I don't need it to be like S tier, God tier smut scenes to enjoy a romance book. I don't even need smut scenes to enjoy a romance book. I am so happy with closed door romances. But like the way these smut scenes were told were like so romantic and like narratively so effective. So I was like, yeah, like that is powerful. <laughs> it's another fake dating romance. We follow our main character Clay and our female main character, Gianna. Both Clay and Gianna are fake dating because they're trying to make two separate people jealous. But Gianna's also like, I'm really sexually inexperienced. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And Clay kind of like takes her under his wing and does the kind of like sexual education vibe, which is just so charming. Like, I feel like that is just such a fun little trope. Clay is just such a good guy. Like, I genuinely love him so much. He's such a strong romantic hero. And Gianna was so cute because she reads a lot of romance books, but like wasn't romantically experienced so it was kind of meta in a sense like Gianna being like oh my god you're so like this kind of romance hero and he's like I don't know what the fuck you're talking about but like we're reading him being that kind of romance hero so it was so fun I just found it to be once again like super addicting could not put it down really rooted for these main characters and just found them like both so gorgeous so absolutely love this book highly recommend for like a really good sports college romance next i really want to share to love jason thorne by ella mays this is another one of us's famous trope but it's also like childhood friends to strangers to lovers which i really love jason thorne is a famous movie actor and our main character olive has had a crush on him ever since they were kids when he was her like next door neighbor now olive is a romance novelist and her book is getting adapted into a film she doesn't realize but jason is in the talks to be the lead of this film and it's the first time seeing each other since childhood he immediately is like oh my god Olive like I can't believe it's you like this is amazing he doesn't even know that the book that is being adapted 
is like her basically like fantasy of them being together which is just so cute. Olive and Jason end up fake dating after paparazzi like catches them in like a hug or something and embrace after like seeing each other for the first time. So it's just really exciting. I just love the one of us is famous trope so obviously I love this book like it's so good and the element of them being like childhood friends and her like being in love with him the entire time is just so charming and romantic. I just found it absolutely gorgeous like such a treat from start to finish. I really bought their chemistry. I thought it was so cute. So absolutely loved this book. Absolutely loved the like family dynamic, the friendship dynamic. It was so fun. Next I want to share it Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This is a really, really fun enemies to lovers. We follow our main character, Piper, who is a socialite, but she's gotten in trouble. So her parents like send her to this like small fishing town. And there she meets Brendan, who is a very grumpy fisherman. He does not like her from the get go. He's like, who is this vapid woman who's coming and like tearing out the town? Like, who is this woman with glitz and glamour? But then they end up forming this really beautiful friendship which turns into like a really beautiful romance. It's small town which is just such good vibes. I really love the juxtaposition of the two characters, the glitz and glamour and then the like dusty smelly fisherman. It was just so cute and I really bought their like enemies to lovers attraction. Sometimes with enemies to lovers it can be like too quick, it can be too slow, too slow burn. This was just like a really happy like middle ground. It just happened at the perfect time. The pacing was excellent. It was just so charming. This is like one of the only Tessa Bailey books that I've really really enjoyed. Like I feel like Tessa Bailey is definitely like more of a miss author for me but this one was just like exceptional. Like I really loved it and there is a reason why everyone loves this book. Next I'm going to talk about a really silly little novella but it's really fun. I genuinely really enjoyed it and that is The Dare by Harley LaRue. This little novella, it actually ended up progressing into a full series which I really do need to read. It's just the books are so expensive. But this is like less than 200 pages, really short novella, all set in one night of this really like popular girl at college like she's very put together and this really weird guy they end up playing this game of like bear pong she ends up losing the game and then has to be like his slave for the rest of the night so obviously it's like really smutty like the novella is literally there to just be like smut why was i like these characters and the character development is so strong <laughs> in these like short pages it was a wild time but I really loved the dynamic of the freaky weird guy and then like the girl who's like oh no like I don't want to be doing this I'm like way too cool for this but it was just so entertaining and I really want to read like the series that this book turns into because I think it's just a group of freaky weirdos and they're like hot girlfriends sounds really ridiculous but really want to read it i genuinely feel like the turning point for these characters in this book was so strong how did it do so much in such a short amount of time if you're just like in a mood one day and you want to read something really smutty but you want it to actually have like a strong narrative read this it's fun i read it for a 24 hour readathon read it in the space of like an hour and i was like i'm surprised what a great time this was next i want to share another two books from the same author but this author is really popular, but definitely like within good reason. It is From Luke Hope With Love by Mariana Zapata and All Roads Lead Here. Both really good slow burn romances. So this one we follow two like rival enemy figure skaters who have to end up being on the same team for a duos competition. Oh my god, the slow burn enemy slovers of this was so much fun. I read this so long ago, I can't even remember why they're enemies. But like their banter and the slow burn of them like being friends was so well done. It's one of the best well done slow burn books I've ever read in my life. Like five stars for a reason. I just loved the sports like competitive element of it. And obviously like if you're literally like on the same team as someone, obviously that's going to create like so much chemistry. I fucking get it. And the chemistry just leapt off the page. It was so interesting from the beginning. Jasmine, our heroine, was so like inspiring and all of her drama outside of this relationship and the situation she's ended up in was so strong. So I just really loved it and I cannot wait for a reread. And also All Roads Lead Here, of course, this is more like small town, grumpy sunshine, single dad, so much fun. We follow our main character Aurora who is trying to connect with her late mother so she moves to this small town, does a lot of hiking, like it's a hiking town, and she ends up staying with this like grumpy single dad. The yearning and pining in here is so good. I don't really like the strong silent type but Rhodes in this book 
he was he charmed me he charmed my socks off again it was just a really inspiring book about like a main character who's starting her life over i just loved aurora's like journey on her own as well like mariana's a part of does such a good job at creating these really well fleshed out individual characters with their own issues and their own problems and this is just like top tier that level i really liked it the vibes of this were perfect it made me want to move to fucking colorado or wherever this is set and go on hikes it literally made me want to like sell all my things and start my life over when a book has that impact on you you know it's going to be a fucking banger so everyone go read this sell your things join me let's go get a cabin in the woods and go on hikes and the final book i want to share with you is a book called the girl he used to know by tracy garvis graves which is another second chance romance which i just found so romantic our main character in here is autistic and i feel like it's a really good representation of that not only like the character herself but the way that like people around her treat her and it's basically a love story between her and this other guy that she goes to college with but they ended up splitting up when they were in their early adulthood years and they have a chance encounter where they see each other again so we're really learning about their previous romance and there's definitely like a big mystery about like what happened to them why they broke up and leading to that mystery so good I just found it to be so romantic it was really touching it didn't have like a lot of sense of humor it wasn't like light and fluffy but it was still so it tore at my heartstrings our main characters are just so sweet with each other so romantic i just loved it i feel like it's not a super popular novel but i really don't understand why it feels like this is gonna sound ridiculous it feels like the book itself is soft-spoken if that makes sense like i don't even know if that makes sense but our characters are so soft-spoken and it feels like the book is also that reading it i was like what a soft-spoken novel i don't get it but i really loved it i found it really charming definitely worth your time really love this one so those are all the romance books i have to recommend for you today if you feel like it feel free to recommend some romance books in the comments maybe some that you think would be similar to my taste based on what i've shared with you today i know there were a lot of like popular ones and ones that were maybe a bit more obscure i don't know i don't really read a whole lot of obscure books i know that i had a lot of popular books in here but i hope that at least someone out there has found something that they want to pick up but yeah guys that brings me to the end of this video thank you so 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 much for watching i really hope you enjoyed a reminder that all my socials are linked down below along with my patreon so if you do want more extra content from me all of the information is on that page love you all so much and i'll see you very soon in the next video bye